Welcome to Straight Shot. Marketing is everywhere. It's around your life. From what you eat to what you wear and where you go. It is a vital part of any and all business. Let's discuss the world of marketing and business as it influences everyday life with the staff of Atlanta Marketing Agency, Reformation Productions, and guests as they give it to us straight. Get ready. Take aim. Steady. Welcome to Straight Shot. I'm sure most of you have heard the old cliche that there's no such thing as bad publicity, or maybe even bad, even bad publicity is good publicity. But is that really true? What happens when you get a negative review about your company in a public forum, like uh, Google reviews or Yelp? Or what happens when you get uh, a negative review on your own company Facebook page? Should you just ignore it? Should you do something? Can you do something? Welcome to Straight Shot Podcast, everyone, and today we will be talking about just that very thing. We get asked to handle this type of emergency from time to time from our clients, don't we, Zachary? Yes, we do. You know, I I got, uh, actually just today, I responded to somebody that had a a question. They had a few uh, bad reviews on their their social media platforms and, and on Google and some other mm-hmm. places on the interwebs. On the interwebs, yes, and uh, and so I just addressed this with somebody to today. Um, it, it's interesting because what was it three four weeks ago? Uh, somebody had called and and asked us about this, and they were in a panic, and and so we thought we should do an episode uh, about how to handle reviews or reputation management, mm-hmm. and uh, and lo and behold, we put the this together for a podcast episode and then the day we're going to record it i get one from a different client so um interesting interesting Mm -hmm. it is uh but yeah bad reviews can certainly happen to uh to good businesses uh, because they come from people and people have opinions Mm -hmm. Uh, and a lot of people feel good when they get to share those opinions uh whether they're constructive or not um sometimes you know Sometimes people they just like to complain. They just like to let it out. Uh, so it's it's I guess it's part of human nature. Yeah, and as an agency, we actually do uh, offer a service that's called reputation management that mm-hmm. you had kind of brought up a minute ago, and that's a service to help our clients outsource how to handle these situations. But you can do it yourself if you have the time and the know-how. So let's talk about how to do the know-how. Let's talk about the the how-to today, Zachary. Sure, yeah. Um, it is something that you can do yourself. Normally, it's uh, it's outsourced because people don't know what to do or, they you know, depending on the size of the company, they don't have time to, to handle it themselves considering, you know, they're concentrating on running their business mm-hmm. um, from an operations standpoint. And but, let's face it, if you're a business owner and you get a negative review, you get emotional. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. That's probably not the best time to handle something. Right. <laughs> um, but, you know, just like with, with most things, though, uh, a business owner is really good at whatever they got into business for. And, and you know, not this type of communication related uh, aspect. But for those that need to, to, to handle this on, on their own when it happens, uh, there are a few things that they need to remember. So if you're going to, to handle this yourself... Um, Take which, notes, people. Which means there's uh, uh, usually it's you're you're relatively small and it, it doesn't happen to you all the time. You're usually reacting to to something that has happened. Uh, with a lot of clients, they'll they'll put reputation management in place at the at the forefront of things, uh, just so it kind of runs along in, in the background. Uh, but if this has happened to you and you're listening to this because oh I have reviews out there and what do I need to do? 
these are the steps that you kind of need to yeah. like need hopefully to walk it's through. catching you off guard because yeah. if you get a bad review and you're like oh if i saw that coming then that's a problem <laughs> but most of the time with our clients especially of course when you get a bad review it's surprising yeah <laughs> Something you're not necessarily prepared for. Um, so the the first thing to remember is to remain calm. Don't um, panic. Don't don't panic. And, and you're you're going to feel, especially if you're a small company or if you're the the uh, the management at a company, um, it can be directed specifically towards you, and that will make you get emotional, um, particularly if it's coming from uh, an employee that like, was yeah, like let an go, ex-employee, um, which happens a lot. Uh, you you terminate uh, an employee. They get upset. They want to hurt the company. Now there's ways to do it through uh, reviews and stuff uh, online. So uh, the first thing to remember is to to remain calm. Uh, oftentimes business owners will get caught off guard by a negative review or a comment on their Facebook or Google, and their first reaction is they're gonna they're gonna panic, you know, because it, it's an emotional thing to them and, and their their business that's that's their they're baby under attack. Yeah, and the business is their baby. You don't mm-hmm. hurt my baby, right? Mother, um, they get mama bear about it. Right, right. Uh, but the worst thing that you can do is react to that comment in, in panic and argue with the reviewer. Mm-hmm. Um, it's crucial to remember that uh, this happens to everyone and it's not the end of the world. Stay calm. Don't get reactionary about it. And above all, do not engage in an argument with the reviewer, especially in a public forum. Yeah, rise above that, people. It's certainly tempting for you to defend yourself or your company when you feel like you're under attack. But remember, this is a public forum and people are watching you. And you don't want the pe- people to watch you have an argument with with somebody. Yeah, uh, it's like the it's like the schoolyard the school play yard. Right, you know, the, the playground. And all of a sudden, one kid pushes another kid. And a whole group of people crowd around those two children. Right. Fight, 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 fight. Because everybody <laughs> wants to see a bloodbath. Yeah. But then, you know, you always have the one kid that's going to retaliate. But then there's the one person that stands up, dusts themselves off, takes the higher ground and walks away. Yeah, that's the thing is... is while you, you don't want to argue with somebody because it is public and people are watching you, that can also work to your advantage because how you do react to that review or that comment matters. Mm-hmm. Uh, arguing with a, cust- with a customer or even a former disgruntled yeah, just employee a negative reviewer. Uh, can do a, a lot more damage than it can good. So you have to be careful with how you re- respond to it. But you should respond to it so that people can see that you care that there was a review there and you know, in, in, in how you are handling it as a professional company. Uh, so that's kind of number two. Um, the next one is don't ignore it. Um, ignoring a bad review says something about your company just as much as you cussing at them in a, a mm-hmm. public forum. It's damaging to ignore the review or the comment entirely because it sends the the message that you don't care about that customer's experience or that uh, employee's experience. Yeah, doing something can be just as damaging as doing nothing. It could be almost the same type of thing. Yeah, and, and the, people will assume that it's not I mean, maybe you don't care about that customer's experience because, you know, they they came in, they showed their butt. Yeah, maybe you remember that customer and you're like, that's uncalled for because they were a nightmare. The problem is when people on the outside are looking at it, they're going to assume that you treat all of your customers that way Mm -hmm. or all of your employees that way. And and that, you know, leaves the, the door open for more people to jump on the bandwagon, right? I mean, let's face it. Misery loves company. People love to watch a fight. They love to engage in a fight. Um, and uh, um, it, it's something that you really need to be careful about uh, doing. When you do respond to the reviewer, if you, you know, said so don't ignore it. If you do choose to respond, just remember that nobody care, nobody else cares about the whole backstory of the situation. Right. Let's say you run a hair salon. Somebody gets on there and gives a negative review about your salon or a stylist in your salon. And let's say you can even remember 
that situation or, or you know, your stylist remembers that situation. So you feel the need to get on Yelp and, re- you know, reply to that review with, well, that's not what really happened. This is what really happened. Yeah. I mean, then we all turn into like eight year olds that all have yeah, to point it's, fingers it's, at somebody. It's really not the point. No. What, what you, you need to remember, again, if we, if we go back to, to the second point that we made, it's that you're in a public forum and people are watching you. What matters is how you handle what was said. It doesn't matter what was true. It doesn't doesn't what matters is how you're going to handle that situation because mm-hmm. people are going to watch how you act. Um, so the, the the first thing to do is you know get in front of it as soon as you can before everybody else. Well, my experience is this, and my experience. So you're going to want to react to it in in a timely in a timely oh, manner. Yeah, that's the worst. Yeah. Is when one person reviews, it's gone left alone and then two or three people jump underneath it going right. then, oh that's awful becky last you have a time i was fight. there i had a problem too and then yeah next thing you know you've got a bunch of people saying that right. all agreeing ganging up on you right bad. so addressing this situation as soon as possible is the best way to get in front of it and kind of stop that potential speeding train of everybody else jumping on board Uh, and to do that it's going to require you to stay up to date on your social media platforms uh, by allowing notifications on your phone or your computer so that you can be alerted when uh, comments or reviews are are being made Uh, set an an alert on your computer for for google so that you know when things are are being said if you're if you're not going to uh, have somebody else monitor it for you it means it means you have to do it yeah, I think that it's really important to dedicate just a little bit of time to doing a general sweep of the internet every once in a while, once a week maybe. Sure. Um, if you're going to do it manually, you can de- uh, dedicate somebody in your office to do it. You can do it yourself. You can do it from home. You can do it anytime. Sure. Just sweep some of the, the large um, search engines like Bing and Google and Yahoo and just you know Google your own business, Google your name if you're a prominent person in your business. Google some of your head employees, see if people are mentioning them, see if people are mentioning your business, see if you have a review on Yelp, if you have a review on Angie's List, mm-hmm. if you have reviews, and read all of them. Take the time to kind of comb through those and see, number one, you can get a lot of information from reading yeah. your reviews. And most of us know where these review sites are, right? Google is important. Mm-hmm. Facebook is important. Uh, and then depending on your bis- your business, maybe it's Angie's List or, maybe, yeah. or Yelp or there, there's lots. Whatever your industry. Check the ones things. that you know because those are the ones that most likely everybody else does as well. But, you know, you're going to want to pay special attention to Facebook and Google. Those are the big because ones. Because when someone's looking for ABC hairdressers and they put ABC hairdressers in Google, that review is going to pop right. up along with Yelp. But you have to do an extra couple clicks to get to the Yelp review. But the Google review might be front and center, and that's something that's important. Um, there's also a little trick, and Zachary kind of brought it up a little bit ago. You can actually set up what's called a Google alert. Yes. And that is very easy to do. It's free. Um, and you just basically tell Google to alert you if somebody searches or mentions something, whatever you put in there, ABC Company, yeah. or you know John Smith, owner of ABC Company. So every time somebody does like a Google on that, or they they write that name down and it's entered into the in, into the internet, it'll say, hey, somebody just mentioned Reformation yeah. Productions. It, it doesn't it doesn't do it with searches. But if anything is published to the website that has that name in it, published to any website that has that name in it, uh, if Google crawls it, then it will let you know. So if somebody mentions you uh, in a review or in a press release or, uh, or you know, somebody's anywhere. Yeah, if they mention anywhere, you like an Urban yeah. Spoon or something mm-hmm. if you're a restaurant. Now, I can't guarantee that those things are going to be timely. No, they're not necessarily in Because it's whenever it, Google combs through right. that and, and Google finds it. So you don't want to just leave it to Google Alerts. But Google Alerts is good to have in your back pocket just in case yeah, you it's can't an, possibly it's think an, of all the places to search. It's an extra step of protection, if you will. Yeah, but you certainly don't want to lean on it because last thing you want to do is read a, a really angry, hostile review from like six months ago or something because that's kind of embarrassing that you've never seen or never replied to Um, another thing that we're going to get to Zachary right is if you do respond to these people you know and Zachary you mentioned it multiple times is that you you have to remember that you're in front of a large forum so you have to really watch what you say to these people so the next logical thing is to take it offline yeah that's the that's the next step is um, you, you have to discuss it uh, you have to address it publicly first. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the next thing is, as soon as you can, 
take it offline. So right. if it's on Facebook. Slide into someone's DMs. <laughs> if it's on Facebook, you tell them that you're going to direct message them or you ask them to call you or the, something where people Oh, I'm really sorry to hear about see. your experience, Deborah. Right. I'm going to private message you or maybe you don't even tell them you're going to private message, but you could say something like, I'm really sorry to hear about your message. I'm going to message you for more information right. see how we can help this or whatever. Yeah, the important thing is that, uh, that people that can see what you're saying see that you addressed it. See that you... you you, you talk to that person with uh, with respect and you gave them and the with time courtesy of day. Mm-hmm. right that's what really matters for the onlookers now the details you do not want to air your dirty laundry in front of the world those details should be handled offline telephone email private message something mm-hmm. like private that private message makes it very so, easy yeah because it's Unless in the it's same like platform Google but yeah. the other thing is too uh, also to keep in mind that your permanent record is the internet. Yes. So even if you get into a private message situation where you're talking to a disgruntled former employee or a disgruntled customer, you know, just because you're not quote in a public forum anymore does not mean you need to get ugly. It mean it does not mean that you need to start getting uh, finger pointy like you did this you did that and, because that stuff can always be screenshotted right. and sent right back into the public forum so and always always conduct yourself with decorum and an, another issue why you want to take it offline is you don't necessarily want people to see how you resolved it mm-hmm. if you're a restaurant yeah and, everybody and be wanting coupons <laughs> and your way to resolve it was you know next time you come in with your dinner is, is Just on ask us. for the manager. Or absolutely, ask for the manager and we'll give you a coupon for blah, blah, blah. That tells the world that if they <laughs> complain, you will give them free stuff. Yep. So you do not want that to happen publicly. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, again, your situation, uh, maybe that is the solution, is to give them a coupon or give them something for free or, or you know, admit that you were wrong, whatever the situation. But don't do it in front of the world um, mm-hmm. because, you know, that could be, could be very bad. But you do want to encourage them. Once you've resolved it offline, you want to encourage them to go back and amend their review. So that's, that's very good for you. And if you handled it well, they will go back there. Thanks. They followed up with me. They handled it extremely well. It's so much better. And then it, it, it's not only correcting the bad review, but it's, it's a testimonial of how you handled that bad situation. Mm-hmm. which is good for you and your company. And I'll tell you, um, I had an example of this. Um, I think it was last year or maybe the year before. Um, I was the social media manager for a business, a restaurant. And they they got a bad review. First of all, they have tons of wonderful reviews. Great, great. Um, People only react to the negative well, ones, you know, don't they? Well, you know, great following, <laughs> great customer base, loyal, loving customer base. It's a, it's, a, it's a restaurant that's quite endearing to a lot of people. Having said that, um, that doesn't mean that a bad review can't happen to a great place. Sure, so absolutely. a bad review came through the wire and it was, I'm so disgusted with this place, blah, 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 bad service, blah, 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 bad food, whatever. And I, you know, whatever, whatever this person said. Um, well, I have my Facebook for the company set up to alert me on my cell phone right. as the manager of the, of that particular thing, which is you, whoever you have dedicated to your social media should have the same type of alert. Mm-hmm. It came right to my phone. I got it right away. Hey, somebody put something online. There's a review posted. Hey, somebody put um, something in your instant message or you know in the private message. I got it right away. I looked at it, and I replied with, um, "Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that you had an experience like that." That's kind of what I said publicly. As, you know, and I said something like, it's never been our policy to do things that way. I'm so sorry to hear that you had that. That's all I said publicly. Then I went into private messenger and I private messaged because it was through Facebook. So it made it very easy to do sure. that. I just clicked on her name and sent her a message. And I said, you know, I used her name, Ms. So-and-so, because I, I knew the name from Facebook. I'm so sorry to hear about that. Can you tell me a little bit more about your situation? Oh, man, that is definitely not in our policy to run the restaurant that way. Um, I'll make sure that the management says something to them about their service. And I also cleared it with the client right. before I offered a coupon. <laughs> and I said, reach out to the client right away. And I was like, hey, this is what's going on. Do I have your permission to offer them anything? What would you like to do? And the client said, you know what? Go ahead, take your name and phone number and tell her I'm going to send her um, a $10 coupon or $20 or something like that. I'm like, okay. 
So I reached back out to her. I'm like, I'm so sorry. I, you know, to make to make it right, I'm going to have management talk to the staff about the way they treat people. And I'm also going to, if you don't mind sending me your name and address, I would like to send you out a gift card. Now these are kind of old school, old school restaurant folks, so they didn't have anything except well, mailing out of. The-, the other thing that that does is it makes it where they have skin in the game. So if you 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 require them, yeah, they're to a real person at that point. Me, yeah, send me your email address. Send me your uh, your phone number. Send me whatever. Yeah, your address. It, it your makes, physical address. It makes it where it's not a joke. They're really. You know, uh, Zachary, you, know, you you had a term for these people that I don't know. Maybe it's common, but I had never heard it. Was keyboard warrior? Yeah. And those are the people that keyboard like, gangsters. Key, keyboard gangsters that like go online and just like to be negative and be jerks, and they like to live in their anonymity. Yeah. Facebook is a little different that way because you see their profile. And uh, that allowed me to connect with them a little bit. Yeah, and a so, lot of places let it be anonymous. And while I was resolving the situation in the private message with this person and trying to do my best to talk with them, first of all, they were completely flabbergasted that I replied that quickly. It was like, oh my gosh. Like at some point, we always think that we're never going to get heard. Right. Oh, well, why don't you complain? Nah, they don't care. No, some you should care. Always care about your customers. Always. Each and every single one of them. Because they tell friends. And that one person turns into so many. Right. And so she was flabbergasted. I replied right away. So as I'm dealing with her and I'm having a really positive experience with her in, in the private messages, I'm actually getting comments on the wall of my Facebook page of this company that says, wow, that's really weird that that happened to you. Wow, you know, this is they're, they've always been so great. I well, so I actually had customers coming to sh- the restaurant's defense. Sure. Underneath the review, right. which was super cool. Um, and so I was like, wow, that that kind of that helps like a lot. Appreciate it. Sure. And so instead of having a, a, a bandwagon of negativity, I had a like a, a drum circle of positivity. <laughs> and then after I was able to resolve it with this person on the uh, social uh, on the private message, they did just what you said before, Zachary. Is they ended up going back onto that wall, mm-hmm. back to their bad review, and in the comments they can't they can't change the review, but they can add. She added to the they, comments yeah. that just said. Just had a great experience. Um, really appreciate you hearing me out. Um, I'm totally going to give you guys a second chance. Well, I mean, and just basically, it was a very wonderful experience all the way around. It really worked out in my favor, and that was because I was prompt, I was polite, and I really, truly did work to resolve the situation. I didn't argue with her. I didn't try to bargain with her. Um, I didn't obviously get ugly with her. So even though sometimes... You, you know, you might question whether or not this person is just trying to get a free meal or whatever. Sometimes it may be worth it to you to just, you know, suck it up and offer to fix the yeah, situation. You, you have to weigh every situation. I mean, we can't make uh, blanket statements about that. But, um, yeah, you have to weigh it all out. And sometimes Sometimes it might worth be it. worth it. Yeah. Also, and- the other really important thing to note about this do, doing something, going off, um, you know, talking, taking somebody, you're addressing the situation, you're immediately noticing the situation, you're immediately addressing the situation, you're immediately addressing the situation privately, right. and hoping, hoping against all hope that they'll go in and give you a good <laughs> review after that. The one thing that needs to be mentioned is at no point during all of this is anything deleted. Right. That does not mean that you can go in and delete most uh, on most reviews won't let you delete it, so that it's not even an option. Because if people could just go in and delete reviews, what's the purpose of having customer reviews, right? Mm-hmm. So, uh, so that's that's not really a, an option. But um, one of the things, and there are ways to, to address that, which we'll get to later. But um, the the next thing, kind of that that you need to look at. Um, so we've gone through and, and we've we've been alerted or we've noticed that there's an issue. We've addressed it publicly in a very respectful manner. We've taken it offline so that we can address it privately. Uh, we've asked them if they're satisfied to go and you know make a public uh, recant of whatever the situation is if they will. The next thing that you really need to look at is is there any relevance to what they said? Yep. You know. Um, it's really important that you listen 
to your customers. So you need to, to ask yourself, is there any chance that what they're saying is true, that it actually happened, that it may be an actual issue with your company or with your staff? Um, now, you don't drag your staff you know, across the floor in front of the customer. But after you've addressed it, you need to ask yourself, is, is this really, is this a problem that I need to address internally? Uh, yes, some people are scorned ex-employees, uh, and there's impossible curmudgeons that are out Sometimes there. Sometimes you can't make everybody um, happy, you right. know. And people, and people understand that. Sure. People but, know there's just going to be those But the chances are, are, are likely that not all of the reviews that you get are from those sorts of people. So you need to you need to look at at complaints that have legitimacy as something that maybe you need to to address. It's kind of like a little gift. It absolutely um, where, is where pe- where people are giving you their their feedback, and you need to respect them and thank them uh, because thank it you gives for you a, that out. yeah it gives you an opportunity to uh, to address the the situation. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I mean everybody you. Know, Zachary, you bring up a really great point about ostracizing or blaming or, you know, yelling at your yeah. uh, uh, your staff in front of customers and stuff. If if, an, if a complaint comes to your doorstep, even, yeah, even if it's in person, don't, don't do that. Don't do that because um, even customers don't want to see you berate your no, employees. Like no, nobody no. wants to see that. Um, the whole point. Everybody wants a positive experience when they're out exchanging their money for goods and services. Everybody wants to have a positive experience. Um, when they're dealing with it, everybody else wants to see a fight. But the person <laughs> dealing with it, the person exchanging goods and you know mon- money for goods and services, they want a positive experience. They want you to be positive. They want your staff to be positive. They want the product to work or the food to be satisfying. Everybody wants happy. So try to always foster an environment of trust, faith, and happiness so that the customer feels comfortable where they're at. And like you know, take those moments of constructive criticism and think to yourself, man, you know, this is actually the third time I have gotten a complaint about this employee right. or this product or the the manner in which we do this. Right. Maybe that's something that I should look at changing. Yeah. If if you go through and three times, uh, you know, you have a review that says that you were closed half an hour early, you need to look at your closing manager. Because more than likely, if three people said it, it's probably happening. Mm-hmm. You know? Or, you know, so-and-so was on the phone when I was trying to check out. Oh, absolutely. You know, yeah. and she looked like this or, or whatever. Or McDonald's said the shake machine was broken. You know what, though? <laughs> that is the true thing. How many of you guys have ever been to McDonald's late at night because you're like, I want a dollar ice cream cone so bad I could, you know, smack my neighbor. And you get in the drive through uh-huh. line and you're like, yes, it's happening because they put a McDonald's in every block. Uh-huh. And you go through that drive through line and you're waiting and waiting and waiting and you finally get up there and you're like, ha, ah, I've got a dollar six in my car. I've got the perfect <laughs> amount of change. And you ask for an ice cream cone and they tell you what? Yep, that is broken. Which is just code for my, I'm too lazy to clean it. My son, uh, we're completely taking a little side road here. We're complaining. We're giving bad reviews. Uh, bad my, review, McDonald's. My, my son. Check yourself. My son is uh, obsessed with milkshakes. He loves them, you know. And so uh, to treat him sometimes, we'll go somewhere and, and get a milkshake. And uh, I, we went to, we were, like we were traveling. Them, I think. We were traveling. I think our, our trip home was like an hour and a half. Mm-hmm. And I literally stopped at every exit. I think there were four of them. And, and it, three, the first three McDonald's I stopped at all claimed their machine was broken. And the fourth one was like, well, of course. Yeah, it was like a running joke where we would get to the we got to the third one and they're like, "Can you have an ice cream machine? Or, do you have an ice cream cone, or is your machine magically broken?" Yeah. And they're like, "A machine is broken." So, for those of you that are at McDonald's or any restaurant, clean the machine, people. We're on to you, okay? Jeez, that restaurant I was talking about earlier, it was an ice cream joint. Like, I get it, I get it. But yep. you know, but but to get back to the point. Is there any relevancy in what these people are saying? Sure. Is there any any tiny little bit of truth that you can pull from that to make your business better? So so after you've gone through that and you've kind of sat on what it was and you've taken it to heart, the next thing that you need to do, shake, shake it, it off. off. Shake it off and move on. Uh, you, you can't um, 
you know, you gotta play the Taylor Swift yeah, song now. Shake it off. <laughs> you, you, it, it isn't the end of the world, and it's important to not dwell on it for too long. Use it, at, you know. You, these are constructive reviews. Use it to guide you to making a better mm-hmm. product, guiding you to to make a, a better service, and in a way to instill trust and loyalty with your customers. Then let it go and get back to get work. Back to work. Um, because I mean, you you can't you can't afford to stay depressed about a, a bad review. Yeah, don't take can't. it so personally. Because, you know, Zachary, you mentioned earlier that sometimes these reviews are about you. You know, like, mm-hmm. the, I don't like, oh, let's say you're a realtor. Yeah. Whoever let the employee go, that's the person that's going to get blasted. You in know, the review or like, if you're a realtor and you get a bad review, that's pretty personal, right? Because, yeah. I mean, that's just like you're a one man show. But as hard as that is to shake off, you've got to realize that this is about business, this is not about you. And uh, you have to think of it that way or else it's going to haunt you. But if you're getting repeated complaints, that's something to think about. Um, maybe that's going to be harder to shake off. But these usually happen kind of out of the clear blue and are very shocking. Yeah. And when that happens, it's best to address it in the absolute best way you know how and then move on. Now, as we mentioned uh, before, uh, reputation management is, is one of the services that, that we offer at Reformation Productions. A lot of agencies uh, will do it because this type of thing happens to, to, uh, to, to businesses. Uh, and when it happens to our clients, the first question that we get is, can, can I can, delete it? Can we just delete this? And, and the short answer, like I mentioned before, is no. You, you can't. Depending on where the review or the comment is. The internet is, is your permanent record, people. Depending on where the review or the comment is, uh, there's a chance that you simply cannot uh, remove it. Otherwise, we would only see positive reviews on everything, and we would all get food, food poisoning at that creepy-looking seafood place that's next to the gas station. Because we um, never read a bad review about that. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we as the public, we count on reviews to, to help us make uh, decisions. So, you know, even the negative reviews will remain. But there are a few things that you can do to manage them, again, depending on the place where they are mm-hmm. being displayed. Facebook comments can be deleted. Now, you need to be very careful about whether you are going to delete them, but a review cannot. So sometimes yes, sometimes no. Most of the time, no, you can't. And we're going to talk a little bit more about this on the other side of the break, but I will say there are things you can do should the review be vulgar. Mm. There are ways that you can flag a review and ask the host of the review, right. like Google, Yelp, whatever. If it's offensive, yeah. If it's offensive, they're using words that are offensive. They're just being like racially motivated. Some something that is that Google or whomever owns that site would right. deem it as inappropriate and flag it. Then there's a possibility for that. But that's not that's not someone just saying they don't like your product or they thought your your staff was mean. This is something you know when that hits when you're just like this is ridiculous and it's racist or that or whatever right but we're going to talk a little bit more about that on the other side of the break because i know our listeners are just chomping at the bit to do some internet scrubbing of their own <laughs> names right now <laughs> yeah. happy googling everybody and uh, we'll talk to you in just a few seconds after this side of uh, after our uh, word from our sponsors all right so let's hear it for the sponsors Woo! we'll be right back <laughs> Introducing Napa Auto Care Centers. Napa, a trusted leader in the automobile industry, has joined together with the top auto repair centers in Atlanta to bring you Napa Auto Care Atlanta. Top local certified mechanics backed by the national power of Napa. Call 1 844 Napa ATL or visit NapaAutoCareAtlanta.com to find the location nearest you. Napa Auto Care Centers, the parts you trust, are now the shops you rely on. Straight Shot is brought to you by Reformation Productions, a full-service marketing agency in Atlanta, Georgia, helping companies promote and communicate their business in the most efficient and effective ways possible through straight-line marketing. Find out more by visiting reformationpro.com or call 678-825-8086. Reformation Productions. Think in straight lines. We're back. Welcome back, everybody. We are talking about um, reputation management and bad reviews. Yes. Zachary, can you highlight some of the ways that a business owner can tackle maybe hiding? Because we've discussed that we can't necessarily yeah. delete, but how can um, we hide these bad reviews? And, and I mentioned this uh, kind of a little bit earlier before the break, um, but it's not really hiding them as much as it is 
pushing them down on the list and essentially burying them. Mm -hmm. um, since Google and other places make it difficult for us to remove reviews, the best thing you can do is flood that media with positive reviews. Uh, if there are some bad reviews that simply won't go away, the best thing to do is just push them down by getting more positive reviews than negative reviews. Like I said before, most people understand that some people are complainers. Mm -hmm. They're going to complain no matter what. They just need to make sure that the scales are, are favorable, right? So that, that, that you give more good than you do bad by a certain percentage. So you should always be soliciting for favorable yeah. reviews. If you look and you have five negative reviews and two positive ones, go get some more. Go get yeah, some more positive reviews. Yeah, because a lot of reviews. these reviews Absolutely. are organized by date. You know, mm -hmm. most recent at the top. Or maybe the most helpful at the top. And if the most helpful, uh, they see negative, they're going to be like, oh, I want to know what right. was... I'm thinking about going to get my hair done at this salon. Oh, I need to hear about the horror stories first. Yeah, there's there's different ways that, that they show up. Um, Amazon does it one way. Google does it one way. Yelp does it one way. Uh, but yeah, either the most helpful, because some places like Amazon will ask you, was this review helpful? If you say yes, then it goes into that this was helpful. Uh, but a lot of them are chronological and so they'll be you know first one last now places like ebay or um or amazon you can literally look for the negative ones literally look for the positive ones uh but with google uh at least at this time it's all you, you have what you have and, and they they're in in order um now there are certainly calculated ways uh for you to to do this to to you know take get positive reviews and, and to solicit positive reviews um, one of the things that, that we often recommend is that you have a uh, printed uh, piece of collateral, which is usually a, a card or a brochure yeah, or, yeah, something, a flyer or something, that you can hand out to uh, customers at the time of service that ask them to go to a certain page, Google, Yelp, Facebook, whatever, uh, and place a, a positive review. You ask that to them when they're happy. <laughs> Right. Give it to the people when they're that are satisfied. satisfied. <laughs> um, and so, you give them this piece of collateral. That usually, what we do is we direct them to a, a website, uh, a web page on your website that is specifically for handling this type of task. Because asking them to do it is not enough. You have to make it easy yep. for them to do it. So you, you have them go to this page, and on that page will have uh, links where they can go and very easily create these uh, these reviews. Um, you can also, if you don't want to do, if you don't have have face-to-face uh, -face contact with your customers, uh, you can do it with a, an email campaign. After somebody has bought something, uh, a week later or after what, whatever, you can send them a, uh, a an email that says, hey, we were really great to, uh, to hope you're enjoying your widget, whatever. Uh, please go give us a, a positive re review. Direct solicitation is, is really good when it comes to, to these sorts of, of things and there's lots of different ways to to go about doing that yeah if there's something that you want to add to your website or whatever just ask your web developer or your marketing agency reformation production um, plug, plug. Plug, plug. <laughs> you know just ask your web developer or um, to put in a little piece of code that can capture that information in an email campaign or um, on your website so that way you'll have that information there are, be directed to the right place. There are specific pieces of code or links that you can get that will take people directly to whatever that is to, mm -hmm. so that they can, can do a review. Now, does the average person know how to get to it? No. Yeah. But a web programmer or an agency or somebody that does this all That's the like time. That's like a one-click thing. For they'll, they'll, they'll say, know, how did we, know you know, that you it. get an email in the mail. Let's say you go and you get your breaks done at, a, at an auto care. And you get an email follow-up the next day that just said, how did we do? You know, and let's say it has like a little uh, image or something in the email that it looks like stars. And, you know, you... You're like, oh, well, I don't mind clicking on five stars because that's easy enough to do. And when you click on the five stars, it takes you somewhere in the Internet. And you're like, oh, well, I guess I'm not. It's not. <laughs> so then it takes you to this landing page in the Internet where you're mm -hmm. able to maybe just 
click the five stars. Or maybe yep. it'll ask you more detailed questions about, oh, well, who did, who is your representative? What kind of product? Yeah. What's your, what's your, you know, household income? What's your age? Like the, all that stuff. But that's up to you to decide how much information you want to capture. I say make it as easy. You need to make it as easy for them as possible. Because ain't nobody got time for that. Yeah, I mean, nobody uh, got time getting, for that. getting a positive review is um, social gold. I mean, you 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 want. Um, to, to it's like a, a, a mini testimonial, all, albeit canned, mm-hmm. right? But it's like a mini test, mini testimonial, and, and it's it's too important to drag out that conversation and really, you know, to, you can always ask for more information after they've left that positive. Yeah, review. and if if the, if you if you direct somebody to a landing page where you can, you know. On a scale from one to five, five being great, how did we do? Or five stars or whatever. And then maybe there's a text box there for people to include details if they wish. Mm-hmm. Make sure that you include some sort of small small fine print at the bottom of that that just says you're giving us permission to mm-hmm. uh, display well, these. Well, there's, there's, a, a, there's a difference between you um, trying to get feedback from your customers. And you eliciting and, a testimonial. And you're, and you're doing a review. Those are the, a review. An online review is usually you have this much room, and you you have to follow whatever that media, Google, Yelp, whoever is asking you. Uh, if you're soliciting for for uh, for improve for feedback to improve your business, you could say whatever you want to. That's different. That's not what we're talking about today. Uh, you should do that too. But that's that's different. You know, yeah, because every time that you reach, every time you get you reach out to a client or a customer. And get and, and are able to actually reach them and touch them, and they reply back to you. Um, you always want to get as much information from them as possible, and always, if it's a positive experience, be able to use that to your benefit mm-hmm. somehow. So just if think about that. All else fails, ask how did you hear about us? Always ask that. Very important. Yeah, just so you know how they got there. <laughs> so, Zachary Bennett. Yes. What is the straight shot for this? Straight shot. Um, in, straight shot. In one sentence, bad reviews happen, even to good people. So it's about knowing, knowing about them and then knowing how to handle them. That's what's going to make the difference. Mm-hmm. Um, put measures in place that, uh, that make it where you're immediately aware of negative comments and reviews. Um, handle them proactively in brand voice. You have to know who you are and speak in your brand voice. And you need to handle it with kid gloves. Don't, don't be um, you know, haphazard about you, you, how you handle it. Can't handle it with care. And always, always, always solicit good reviews. Not just in times of trouble, uh, but as a normal part of your marketing strategy, always ask for, for good reviews on a normal, everyday basis. So what I'm hearing are three Ps. Th- did I say three Ps? There's three Ps, which are prompt, professional, and then a fair amount of pandering. <laughs> okay, that's okay. It's okay. If they've had a positive experience, they probably want to tell their friends. So you're yeah. good there. It's okay. It's okay to pander a little bit. You know, you gotta, you need that to stay in business. It's mm-hmm. fine. And of course, if they ever need any help with anything, we're always here for them. Uh, of course, yeah. We can handle things like this for. Uh, we we handle things like this from for many companies all the time. Uh, so we're well acquainted with uh, how to manage it, and we're always here to help any company in any capacity that we can. Right. So, uh, yeah. So don't not care about your bad reputation. Just take proactive (laughs) measures to manage your reputation and do it as quickly as possible. Prompt is the key. Listen, we've just discussed online reputation. Uh, Once it gets into the public awareness or on on TV or, or worse yet, at the water cooler, like if people where care, everybody to talk about is it. talking about it, it gets harder and harder yeah. for you to handle. It's a it's a um, wildfire, people. It spreads. But I mean, e- even that can can be managed. Uh, you know, some politicians or celebrities will literally make bad things happen uh, behind the scenes just so that they can do the cleanup and everybody can can watch them and, and so that they can claim that you know they're a rebel or, or that they really care about the public or you know there's even in PR this is I mean reputation and is that's a big why thing. the whole um, any press is good press type yeah. of thing yeah well it's, it's a way to stay top of mind with the public um, but it can 
it could be complicated. So <laughs> you want to be known, but not known for the wrong. Things. Handling it when it's online before it becomes common knowledge best best thing to do, unless you're literally stirring it up because you know you're a debutante of some sort and you're a celebrity. Or a you're debutante a is that or, word still used? Or, 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 uh, I have a vocabulary. <laughs> Well, so we hope this episode helps somebody because I'm sure there's somebody out there right now who's panicking or has recently panicked about something they might have read about their business or themselves online. Sure. So uh, please let us know in the comments of our Facebook page. Leave us a positive review on <laughs> iTunes. Positive reviews are always appreciated. If you have a negative review about this podcast, keep it to yourself. <laughs> And as always, you can reach out to us uh, at 678 8086 extension 300, with any questions you may have for future episodes, any questions about this episode, any other suggestions for um, ideas moving forward. Mm-hmm. Um, just let us know. We're here for you all the time. We check our inst- we check our emails and everything and all the time. We live for you. <laughs> so be careful out there. Guard your reputation. You know, take care of it, handle it well, and uh, we'll see you again next time. Yep. Bye, guys. See ya. Thank you for listening. If you found this podcast informative, we hope you'll pass along our web address, straightshot.net, to your friends, colleagues, and business associates. And please leave us a positive review on iTunes or on our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash straight shot. If you would like to have your question featured on the show or would like to be a guest, call 678-825-8086, extension 300. Or you can email us at info at straightshot.net. Be sure to download the Straight Shot podcast app on your smartphone to hear previous and new shows. You can also find us on Spotify, iTunes, or directly at straightshot.net. This has been Straight Shot. Straight Shot.